In this video, we're going to dig a little deeper into the plan form tab and what the different parameters do and how they're calculated. So under this total plan form box here, we have the span, which is still 18 by default. And what that's calculating is the distance from the tip along the wing to the center and then back out to the tip. So this is summing the section distance or the section span here in the tab, which we have set to nine. And because we're symmetric, it's doubling it. But notice that our projected span is actually smaller than the calculated span of the sections in total. And that's because we've given this wing some dihedral. Now the dihedral is making the tips come closer together as we rotate that wing upward. So naturally the projected span, which is our top down view tip distance, is going to get smaller. So bear in mind that when you give a wing dihedral, the projected span is going to change. Now the chord and area are still set and calculated in the same manner as before. And we've also given this wing some root incidence. So let's take a look at some of the things that happen when we try and play with that. For now, we're going to change the root incidence from the 10 degrees back down to, let's say zero for now. So now that it's flat, and jump that back up to say 10. But notice that right now the incidence location is set at the quarter chord position. So right here is where this is rotating. If we move this around, you can see that happen. That center of rotation is right there at the quarter chord. If we move this position to zero, that's at the leading edge of this root chord. And now as we rotate around, that incidence is relative to that point. If we move it out to the trailing edge, now that rotation is relative to the trailing edge point. So you can control where your incidence is actually set within your model using the incidence location and the incidence angle. Now, another thing that we have access to here is our leading edge and trailing edge clustering. And all that does, if we go to a hidden view, which makes it a little easier to see these parts, is it clusters the cross sections that we've defined under the general tab in the chordwise directions closer or further away from the leading edge and trailing edge. So as we make this clustering value smaller, it pushes those points closer to the leading edge and gives us a bit more refinement around that curve. We have the same kind of control back at the trailing edge. So even for a small number of points, we can kind of get a reasonable shape along this leading edge. Let's compare this shape, for example, to a value of one and notice how rough and choppy this is. We set this back to something like 0.2 or point one, and now we have a much smoother surface along the leading edge. So for your analyses, for your 3D printing, for exporting to CAD, you can set up the leading edge and trailing edge clustering so that you get a bit more refinement around that curve. The last thing we'll look at here, and we'll turn off our symmetry, is using the plan form tab to adjust our cap tessellation. Now this increases the number of sections here on your caps, in this case at the root and out at the tip. And the reason that we do that is if we change the cap type to something like round, you can see that adding more cross sections to the caps gives you a smoother representative surface. Taking this all the way down makes it rough, turning it up makes it smooth. Now it's important to note that this cap tessellation under the plan form tab also controls the number of cross sections on your leading edge and trailing edge closures. So if you have a blunt trailing edge, and you want to control the number of sections on that surface, you control it here under the plan form tip treatment. 